Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mike and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a video today documenting my experience selling two websites with MotionInvest.com. Now, many of you out there are building sites, you have a portfolio, some you want to keep long term, some you may want to sell, or maybe some you've just been thinking about selling and you're not sure how this process goes. Well, I did two sites with MotionInvest.com. Um, they both had fairly different results. There was some really good parts to Motion Invest, and there were some not so great parts to Motion Invest. And I'm going to share all that with you today and discuss how it went, discuss the process, the money I got, and how long it took, and the ups and downs with it. So stick around and let's get into it. All right, so if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I have. A few sites but there's two that I've been with for a while for at least a year and a half two years so I decided to take those first two sites I started with um, some were good some were bad they had their problems but just offload them and start fresh so what I did is I decided to sell them and the first step of going to sell your site with motion invest is doing what they have an online valuation tool and it gives you an instant valuation of your website i'll leave a link down below to motion invest it's not an affiliate link it's just a link for you to go to their free site evaluation if you want to find out roughly what you could get now i like this on um, this online site valuation tool because it takes your traffic your analytics the age of the site the domain authority the niche and it gives you a ballpark based on the typical 35 to 45 times valuation. If you're not familiar with that, it's basically they will take the last six months or 12 months averages of your net revenue, and then they will multiply that at a multiplier between somewhere between 35 and 45, depending on your niche and some other factors. And that will give you an idea of what your website's worth. So for example, if my website was making $100 a month on average for the past six months, let's take a ballpark of 40x multiplier, that website would have a valuation of $4,000. Or you take a website that's making $10,000 a month on average for six months, multiply that times 40, and now you've got a $400,000 website. So you can play with those numbers with your own site and kind of see where you fall into that ballpark. So once you fill that out, you get an instant online valuation. And in my case, for the camping website, because it was making right around $300 a month, it gave me a valuation of about $12,000. And then the dog website was making about $200 a month, and that gave me a valuation of about $8,000. Now they do say in there, um, you know, that money's not guaranteed. It's got to go on the marketplace. They may make you an offer straight from motioninvest.com, or you can choose to list it on their marketplace. And then they also give you a little table comparison of listing it on other competitor broker sites like Flippa or um, Empire Flippers, just some other, to give you an idea of what fees you'd be looking at. In my case, I didn't even qualify for Empire Flippers because my website was not big enough um, and didn't make enough. And Flippa, although I thought about using Flippa, it's got less fees. It doesn't have a, a charge to use it. Or, or It does, but it's very small. I didn't want to screw up you know, a five-figure deal, $20,000 worth of websites on, and end up getting scammed or screwed over or something go wrong in the transfer process when it's directly seller to buyer. I wanted more of a, um, a broker deal where there's actually a broker who handles 90% of this for you. And that's what I did get with Motion Invest, which I'm thankful for. All right, so once you get that online site valuation, you have a choice to respond to that little valuation email and say, yeah, I want to continue the due diligence process and list with Motion Invest, or you can just ignore the email and move on. So I decided to go ahead and list with Motion Invest, and that put me into what's called a due diligence period. And that process, it took about 10 days. And in that process, they then send you a new email and they ask for some legitimate proof of income, like exporting your Amazon Associates, exporting your Ezoic Analytics, are your Google Analytics exporting your um, your Ezoic revenue, and then they go through and they whatever process they have on their back end during due diligence, they go and verify all that information to ensure that your what you're claiming income wise is actually true. Um, I think it's a really good thing to be honest because if I was a buyer and I was using a service like Motion Invest, I'd want to know that the website I was purchasing was verified. It was truly making what it claimed it was making. The last thing I want to do as a buyer is buy a website and find out I got screwed over. So I think the due diligence period of 10 days, it may be quicker for some, but in, on my experience, it lasted 10 days. 
I think it's a good thing because it kind of protects both parties, including Motion Invest. So once they complete that due diligence period, they send you back a new email. Um, and this email is kind of a, hey, here's what we'll offer you or won't offer you to buy it directly at a lower price, but it's instant. Or you can list on our marketplace, here's the price we suggest and here's how long we will do it. And that's the email I got. So what they did and for the camping website, they came back and said they were not going to buy it directly, but they would list it on the marketplace for $11,730. And they do what's called a Dutch style auction, which basically means they list it at $11,730 and they will deduct that price by $42 every two days until it reaches a reserve baseline price of 11,100. So what they're saying is, We'll list it on the marketplace and it contractually will sell between somewhere, if it sells, between 11100 and 11700 And I thought that was fair based on my valuation of $12,000. Um, and then the pet site was giving given a listing price on the marketplace of $8,360, also with a Dutch style auction where they will reduce the price by $28 every day until it reaches a reserve baseline of 7940 so um, they did throw the caveat in there on the email that said websites often move quickly on our marketplace, though there's no guarantee it allows an opportunity to secure a higher price point. Um, so at first glance, that seems great, right? So 12,000 or 11,7 for one site, eight and some change for the other site, basically a $20,000 worth of websites I can sell on their marketplace. But there's a couple things that go with that. One is you have to sign an exclusivity agreement which basically means that for a month you will list on their marketplace and you will list it nowhere else so i can't go shopping brokers and just try to see who gives me the best price i'm basically agreeing to only list it with motion invest and to give it that one month period um, to give exclusivity rights to motion invest to list my website the other one is and this is the biggest one for most people there's a 20 percent success fee or basically a 20 percent commission for motion invest now, is 20% a lot? It is. If you take, you know, a $12,000 website, that's $2,400 you're going to give to Motion Invest. And then an $8,000 website, that's $1,600 you're going to give to Motion Invest. So they're going to walk away with four grand out of this deal. That's a lot of money. But how much is peace of mind worth knowing that the transfer process should be smooth? More on that later. And you're not going to get ripped off. There's a, value, there's a huge value in that, especially as your website gets more valuable, the last thing you want is to get screwed over or ripped off on a website deal. So being that it was my first time selling websites, I figured a 20% success fee. In my case, I'm willing to take that on because I want to get it done, get it done correctly, and not worry about a bunch of things or have a bunch of things go wrong. So I went ahead and accepted that listing agreement for both websites at their stated prices of 11730 and 8360 The very next day, I received a listing contract in my email from like a DocuSign style website. Um, it's a pretty standard legal agreement basically saying I was, you know, going to list it through Motion Invest. There's exclusivity, there's success fees, and there's no guarantees, you know, typical legal document. I signed that and sent it back over. The very next morning, my sites went live. Um, I saw them come in and I'm, if you're on Motion Invest email list, you'll get an email once or twice a week with new sites they have on there. And that very next morning, boom, they were my sites. And so I was excited to see them listed. Um, and within 39 minutes of listing, um, I had an email from Motion Invest saying that my camping site sold at full price, which was great. Um, and then about three hours later, I got a negotiation where somebody offered 7,500 for the pet website. I declined it. Um, and they came back at 8,000 even, which I already have it listed at 8,300. So it's a $300 negotiated discount off the price. We ended up at $8,000 flat. Basically $19,730 um, was the gross selling price for both websites. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit more drawn out. Once you've listed, once you've sold, you know, contractually agreed to buy and sell a website, now you go into what's called the transfer process. And Motion Invest moves you from someone who orchestrates the brokering to what's called their transfer team. And their transfer team is simply responsible for, you guessed it, transferring the website from the buyer 
or from the seller to the buyer in this case. The very next day after selling, they sent me an email and it was requesting where the domain's registered, WordPress admin login details, a full website backup with files and database, adding their email address to Google my Google Analytics property um, and Google Search Console with admin access, and then a social account, email and logins, Skype ID if they need to do any one-to-one, -one, and then removing Ezoic integration and um, having Ezoic support remove that domain from my Ezoic account. So that process took between five and seven days for both websites. Now, this is where things got a little difficult for me and potentially for you. See, I'm not, I don't have a background in tech. I don't have a background in websites. I don't have a background in IT jargon. I go to WordPress, I put a theme on, I write articles and I post them and I study SEO. That's what I do. So I would get one line emails from the transfer team that say, uh, for example, push the domain to the seller. I don't know what push the domain to the seller means. Now I can use what common little common sense I have and deduct that it probably means they need me to transfer this domain to the seller, but I have no idea how to do that. I don't even know, I know nothing about it. So I wrote back and said, hey, I'm happy to do that right now. Can you just give me maybe a link or some sort of resource that explains what I need to do specifically? And he wrote back another one line email that said, Yes, send the domain to the new buyer. And I was like, I don't know where they get their transfer team staff. I don't know if they're outsourced, maybe limited English, I don't, or just busy, I have no idea. So it made me go, okay, well, they're not gonna help me here, so I'll need to figure this part out. So I got on with support with my dom you know, my host provider and did some Googling, and I eventually figured things out within an hour or two, and I was able to move the domain. But, if you don't know what you're doing, I would, there's not a complete hand-holding process for the transfer. They will send you the steps you need to do, but you'll have to do some legwork on how you get that done. Um, once there was a lot of back and forth emails, for example, they would say, add us to Google Analytics and give us admin control. Here's the email to add. I would add their email for Motion Invest to my Google Analytics account, give them admin access and hit save user or add user, and Google would say, sorry, this email address has too many accounts associated with it, you can't add them to any more. So I'd email them back and say, hey, Google won't let me add you, you're apparently on too many domains right now, or too many properties, can you remove a couple properties and then get back to me or give me a different email address? And they would write back maybe a day or two later, okay, try it now. And I would try it and say the same thing. So this happened two or three times between the two sites. A little frustrating, but we did get it done within seven days for both sites. I wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing. I would just say it's an area that could probably be tightened up as far as the back end and the transfer process of Motion Invest. All right, so the best part for everybody, obviously, is once, oh, let me back up a second. So this is where it was not so good. Seven days passed, both sites, I get an email from the transfer team saying the transfer is complete. You will receive an email from the payment processor with instructions on how to receive your, your money. Great, so I get a, email from the payment provider, which is a company called Veeam, V-E-E-M, and they had a pretty good software program. You just enter your banking info and your, your personal info. Um, it was verified within 24 hours, and within three business days, I received funds in my bank account, just like expected. No, no hidden fees, drama, nothing. It was, it was a fairly smooth process. But here's where it got a little weird. Um, I would log back into Ezoic, mining my own business, working on my grilling site and whatever I have going on, or whatever else I have going on, and I would see that the property of my camping website was still in my Ezoic account. And so I emailed Ezoic support and said, hey, I needed this removed, there's a new buyer for the site, please remove this domain from my account. And so Ezoic emails me back and says, sure, contact the person who bought your website, have them contact us and unintegrate it and then see if they'll come onto our Ezoic platform or they'll put the domain on their Ezoic account. And I said, okay, well, I couldn't get a hold of the buyer. And then um, Ezoic said, well, if you can't get a hold of the buyer, just remove the integration. Well, to remove the integration, I need to have access to the admin of my website so I can remove the plugin and deactivate the Ezoic plugin. But I don't have that because I don't own the site anymore. So round and round and round, was finally able to get it sorted out, but if you get an email from a transfer team that says your transfer is complete, 
in my mind, the transfer is complete. I shouldn't be doing more legwork and emailing sellers outside of the transfer process because I feel like that's where things can get muddy. That's where the waters can get a little murky when you're saying the deal's done. Oh, now I need you to do this, do that. I mean, if they say it's transferred, it should be transferred. There, I shouldn't be doing this work once everything's done and Motion Invest has moved on. So that would definitely be a place of improvement um, for Motion Invest. If your transfer team is telling people the deal is done and everything is transferred, it should be done. There should be a due diligence on their end where they're making sure everything is complete. So it wasn't a bad process, but it was a little bit more of a headache than I expected. However, you list a site, it sells same day, you have a week of transferring and then you get a payment within three days. That's a pretty solid business model and a pretty good way for you to offload your websites if you're looking at doing it. So pros overall for using Motion Invest were onboarding was easy, listing sold immediately, and I was paid as agreed without any issues. The cons of selling with Motion Invest, the transfer team was very short one line emails and they expected you to just understand what was going on. They should probably understand that a lot of newer niche site builders, especially people selling at that under 50,000 mark, might not know all this tech jargon. Or maybe they do, but at least have some copy and paste instructions for them to follow instead of one lines like, hey, push the domain. The pet site was super smooth. There was no problems there at all. So I did have one hiccup with the camping website, but that's been the whole life of that camping website. It's always been a hiccup in progress. So nonetheless, all in all, I'm very happy with the process. I would use Motion Invest again, However, before I just left the transfer team and said, hey, thanks, I would verify all those steps were actually complete. So you as the seller are not trying to do those things without the help of Motion Invest and without the security of the broker deal. You're, you're now doing it on your own like you could with Flippa for a lot less money. So I would say, all in all, great process. I was able to take that revenue and invest it into tons of more content for my grilling website. Um, I'm working with niche website builders on an age domain case study. I was able to get one of their age domains um, that had some incredible backlinks, and I think it's a good niche. And so we're going to start discussing that on upcoming videos with niche website builders. And all in all, happy I sold it. I enjoyed the process, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. So if you were thinking about listing with maybe Flippa or Motion Invest or Empire Flippers, this will give you a little insight into how that deal went, what you can expect, and hopefully it was helpful. All right, guys. Income reports, niche website builder, age domain case studies are all coming in. So I look forward to sharing those with you guys as well. And we will see you in the next one.